Hey folks, welcome to the shop. So my inspiration for this video is a tool that is as old as woodworking itself. A tool as old as time, the woodworkers know. So lately there's been a huge rash of videos addressing this topic, with subject matters as varied and numerous as there are types of mallets. So why do another one, you ask? Well, the one constant I've noticed is that irregardless of the type of mallet that they're building, they all seem to be addressing the same problem. The joinery. How to keep the end from flying off and whacking you in the noggin. If you remember in one of our previous visits, I did indicate that we probably weren't going to reinvent the wheel. But years ago I did come up with a solution for the weakness of this joint. Just eliminate the joint. Now over the years I've lost track of how many of these that I've made for friends and family and gifts and giveaways. But I can honestly say that in all the years I've been building them this way, I've never had one fail. So that said, this seemed like a great way to get rolling. I'm going to share with you my methodology for building the non-traditional woodwork. So the material that I've chosen for this product is hickory. I figure if it's good enough for Major League Baseball, it's good enough for me. You're going to need to glue yourself up a little chunk of mass density hardwood. This is three little pieces of four quarter wenge that I had laying around the shop. But you could use ebony, bloodwood, anything of that nature. So you're going to begin by cutting yourself three equal pieces of the hickory. You don't even need to worry about dressing the sides of the edges. As long as your flat faces are true and dressed and ready to be glued up, you're good to go. When you're done, it's as simple as just gluing them up into a block 10-11 inches long and 10 to 12 quarters thick. The hardwood block that you prepared should start out about 3 by 3 you're going to determine the end grain faces, and off each of those faces, you're going to cut a slice about three quarters of an inch thick. When your block is cured, you're going to square it to four and a half inches wide by ten and a half inches long. Then for the last step of your prep, you're going to take the two blocks that you made, you're going to glue them flush onto the long sides of your block, one inch down from either end. Now what I do to make shaping easier when I'm done is I take anything in my shop with about a 12 inch diameter and mark an arc on the end of the block. Then simply cut it out on the bandsaw. Save the pieces and it makes it easier to just set them back in place to mark center. You'll figure out why in a minute. Because hickory is so hard and not an easy wood to turn, I cut out the basic shape of my handle, leaving myself about two and a half inches. It just saves me a ton of work on the lathe. Now here's the time you get to be creative. Have fun with this. I personally always turn my handles first and then work my way up from there. I probably couldn't have chosen two woods that are more difficult to turn. Hickory's a tough one. It's so dense it splinters and tears out. Just take your time. You'll be rewarded in the end. Now on a side note, because you're turning a span surface, which means you're not in contact with the material during the entire revolution, face grain wenge will come off in chunks if you happen to get a turning tool caught underneath of it or get a catch. We'll shape this when we're done off the lathe. I'll show you. Just stay away from it. Now I turn my handles down to about an inch and a half. I guess it depends. If you've got great big mitts, you might want to go bigger than that. But just as you're turning, stop every once in a while and grab a hold of it. If it's comfortable in your hand, you're probably there. The next step is turn the throat of your handle above the grip, down to about an inch and a quarter, right out to about an inch and a half below where the head tapers out. This should kind of give you an indication of the shape that I'm talking about. Take your time here. Go slowly. The exact shape and dimension is not really that critical. 
The whole point is you're just leaving some extra mass to keep the weight up in the mallet in. When you're done, this is the radius you're after below the mallet head. Just take your time, go slowly. Play with the shape, find something that's aesthetically pleasing but still structurally strong. I do all my handles the same way, so the last step for me, I create an eighth inch wide relief about a quarter of an inch deep with a smooth round over between each one. I add some simple automotive O-rings, makes for a great non-slip handle. So the next step is we're going to shape the rest of this off the lathe. If you have a spindle like this, it'll make short work of it and make this a fairly simple process. The secret to keeping all your sides even and true is as long as your handle is pointing straight up, everything will be nice, straight and square. When I'm finished shaping, I surface sand to around 600 and a light coat of antique or tongue oil I find works great. When it's all finished, you'll be left with a beautiful heirloom piece that'll last for years and years of reliable service. And I use mine a lot. And you know what? I guarantee the head will never come off. If you break this thing, you're using the wrong tool. Well guys, thanks again for hanging out. Take this project on, I guarantee you'll enjoy it. A new solution to an old problem. Better yet, if you'd like to have this one, just share and subscribe in the next 30 days. I'll draw a name and ship this one off to some lucky viewer. Thanks again for hanging out guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, and my shout out for this week? Goes out to Maureen Noche Photography. Thanks, Maureen, for everything you do.